And it looks like today that the Labor Party has held on in Eden Monero. Is that your sense? Oh, look, I'm, I'm not going to call this one yet, Kieran, and I didn't last night. Um, there's lots of numbers moving around here, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll hold my, keep my powder dry on this one. I've been, uh, I've been involved with Eden Monero since 1975 when I first stood on a polling booth there, and I've never, I've learnt never to call it early because it's, uh, it's an electorate that where all sorts of things can happen. But what, what is very clear, Kieran, is that there's been a very strong swing in, in primary votes against Labor, 3%, a swing towards us, a uh, very good result for Fiona Cotvoice and, and for the Prime Minister, and a, a very strong endorsement of our focus on the virus, on jobs, on making sure that Australians in, and Australia are in a strong position as we come out of this virus, on the rebuilding effort in Eden Monero, which has been hit with fire, with flood, uh, with drought. Of course, the drought is still running in Eden Monero more than any other part of Australia, uh, and of course the virus. And, and uh, it is clear that the voters of Eden Monero have shown very strong support for the government, for the Prime Minister and for our wonderful local candidate. It was an interesting contrast between the very strong support and swings across the board, really, inland to the government, but the softer support on the coast. Would you put that down to the fires, the summer of fires that we saw? Uh, look, it's a bit more nuanced than that, uh, Kieran, and I've, now that we've got all the booth results out, it's clear that we did very well in Naruma. Uh, and so Labor's strength was, was in uh, the Bega area and down to, uh, down to the uh, Victorian border, Marimbula uh, and, uh, and Eden. And, of course, that's, that's where uh, Christy McBain's uh, local mayoralty is. So you, wouldn't, you shouldn't be surprised by that. I mean, we saw a 9% swing to us in Cabago, uh, which... Uh, it was an extraordinary, extraordinary outcome. Uh, and very strong results inland when you go up to Queanbeyan, and Cooma, Tumut, Yass. Uh, you have fantastic results for us, but a, a devastating result for Anthony Albanese and the Labor Party. A 3% swing against them. Albanese practically moved to the electorate 23 different visits. He threw the book at this, and you could see that on the polling booths on the day. You could see it on the advertising on, on television. Absolutely threw the book at it. Uh, devastating result for them. Serious questions, I'm sure, being asked in the Labor Party about how it could have got to this. But a great endorsement of the very strong focus we have and will continue to have, regardless of this result. When you say it's devastating for Anthony Albanese, the fact is it looks like Labor might have won. So if they've won, how does that, you know, how does that equate to being devastating? Well, well Karen, as you know, on average... Uh, by-elections like this have a swing against the government of 3.8 per cent and the government hasn't won one uh, for a uh, hundred years and last time one was won it was uh, against a politician who'd been thrown out of the parliament for sedition. So there's no question this is a very good result for us and, and it's, a, it's a dire result for Labor regardless of the outcome. Look, we're down to a few hundred votes and I'm not going to, I'm not going to forecast the outcome here, but what, I, what I'm very confident in saying is that this is, under the circumstances, a very strong endorsement of where the government is going uh, and a sharp rebuke for Labor for, the, for, for not focusing on the things that really matter to Australians. You know, what's also striking in the results is when you go into those booths where there's a strong number of tradies, of, of young families, uh, of uh, blue-collar workers uh, in places, the tougher parts of, of Queanbeyan, our results were extremely good, extremely good. And, and this is Labor's base continuing to flee from them. Uh, we saw it at the last election. We saw it again yesterday. Uh, and this is the pattern that has really set in. When you, when you look at the swing, though, uh, we've heard previously, and there's a lot of respect for Mike Kelly, the outgoing local member, and the view is that his personal vote was about 3%. So any swing that we see against Labor, wouldn't that simply be the Mike Kelly vote not there, essentially? Well, well that's, been, that's been true for every one of these by-elections for the last 100 years. There's been a sitting member leaving. So, you know, that's not new. That's, that's, that's as you would expect. The point here is that we've had a swing towards us and Labor has had a sharp swing of 3% against them um, in, in a by-election uh, at a very, very tough time. I mean, let's face it, we're, we're facing the toughest job conditions 
in this country, country since the 1930s. Now, in any normal circumstances, you'd expect that to be very tough for the government. Uh, but And, yeah, we're seeing governments all around the world struggling, struggling politically at the moment. You just have to look at the United States as an illustration of that. So, you know, this is, as I say, a very strong result. And you look, we all saw it on the booze yesterday. There was no anger. There was, there was no anger. There was very strong support for the government's policies. I heard it again and again and again. Uh, and, uh, you know, that, that, is, that is a strong endorsement. And, and it says we need to just keep focusing on those critical things, on, on dealing with the virus, on getting Australians back into work, on keeping Australians safe and secure. Our defence policies, of course, huge defence policies announced $270 billion in the last week, all about keeping Australians safe in a world which, which is less secure than it has been in the past on so many, in so many different ways. So... Uh, as I say, I think a, a really strong endorsement of where we're going, but we, we, we now have to continue to keep that pathway strong. What, what do you say to the argument, though, that, uh, you know, it's the, the counter-argument to essentially what you're saying in terms of the, the pandemic being a, a tough time for governments, that actually Australians are willing the government on. They want the government to do well. Admittedly, the Prime Minister, his approval rating is soaring because of the effective management of the crisis, but is there also that sort of patriotic component in there as well for the incumbent? Well, I think I think the Australian people always want their, their governments to do well. I think that's always true. Uh, but the the point right now is that they're perceiving we are doing well, and our our job now is to keep our, our heads down and work hard to ensure that Australians are in a strong position coming out of the virus. Look, this is an electorate that is facing a rebuilding task like no other part of Australia. You know, flood, fire, drought, uh, virus. And, uh, and what, what's, what's very clear is Australians are saying, we want you to keep doing what you're doing, um, continue that rebuilding effort. Uh, there's tough issues here to deal with. with, with we're working our way through them. We've got a strong, unified government and cabinet, and, and that's what Australians want to see at this time. And it's a stark contrast, as I say, to so many other governments around the world that are really struggling with the circumstances. Um, I think uh, we, we need to just keep going in the direction we've been going. What, what do you say to uh, Fiona Kopvoice if, if she does fall short? Because she's run two good campaigns, but by the looks of it, has fallen just short against Mike Kelly by 1,700 votes, and this time looks like it could come down to only a couple of hundred votes, but again, just short. Well, I'm not writing her off yet. I mean, as I say, I've learned since 1975 um, when I, I saw the first... Uh, the first time I saw an outcome in Eden Monero where we, we, we won it when the Whitlam government left. I mean, it was tight. It was tight. It's been mm. tight in almost every election since then. So I'm, I'm not going to call it yet, Kieran. But I tell you, Fiona did a stunningly good job. Um, she did a stunningly good job. Uh, she is a very, very strong candidate. Uh, she's got out there and sold the government's message. She's been very, very well received right across the electorate. She's worked extremely hard. It's a great tribute to her that she did so well against all predictions at the last election and no one thought she'd get within cooey of Mike Kelly and she, she almost won the electorate, about 800 votes short. So, uh, and she's done it again. She's done it again last night uh, in, in such difficult circumstances. A very difficult time to campaign, as you know. Uh, what a great result mm. for Fiona, um, and she, it, it's a real tribute to her. Well, we will have the first female member for Eden Monero since Federation, so one way or the other, that's a good development. Let's um, finish off, though, this morning before I let you go and get your thoughts on the news confirmed to me this morning by the Finance Minister, Matthias Cormann. He's uh, sent me his statement saying that he's going to leave by, at the end of the year. He's going to serve for another six months. His last budget coming up in October and then he's wrapping up his time in Parliament. Uh, what, uh, what do you say to that news that we've been reporting this morning in terms of a veteran of the coalition departing after 13 years? Yeah, and he's provided this uh, incredible continuity for us in, the, in that finance portfolio since 2013, since we got into government. He put us, he played a critical role in putting us in a position uh, where we could deal with the pandemic in the way that we have, 
uh, by, by getting us back to a position where we're in structural surplus. I mean, this, this is the hard work of Matthias Cormann and everyone who's worked with him in Cabinet and across the party, uh, and I'm sure in, in the departments, knows that he, he has been relentless, uh, he's been effective, uh, and, and he has been a great servant to Western Australia, the Liberal Party and Australia. And he'll continue to be a great servant into the future. Look, he's got six months of very hard work to do. It's not over, I can assure you of that. And he knows that mm. only too well. And I'm sure he will acquit himself well in the next six months as he has all the way through his political career. It will be a big challenge, though. Did you concede big shoes to fill, not just as a Senate leader, because he's corralled the crossbench quite effectively, but also that continuity you spoke of as Finance Minister, it's a challenge for the Coalition heading into that next electoral cycle without his presence. Uh, we've got a strong team, Kieran, um, and, and, and that's what's working so well at the moment. You, you recall we talked about this last night, it's just the strength of the team, and I see that every day. We're strong, we're unified, and we're focused on Australia and Australians, and uh, that's showing, I think, and uh, will continue to show. But Matthias has still got a lot of work to do over the next six months. He knows that. Um, and, and, of course, we wish him and Hayley well into the future, but it's another six months before we'll be saying our final farewells uh, from, uh, mm. to, to Matthias from an extraordinary political career. Joining me live from Goulburn this morning, Energy Minister Angus Taylor, I appreciate your time and thanks for backing up after our long evening last night. <laughs> thanks, Kieran.